In today's video, we will discuss one of the most feared and fanatical units of World War II, the Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler. The Leibstandarte was not just an ordinary division, it was an elite unit of the Waffen-SS, originally formed as Adolf Hitler's personal bodyguard unit. Its involvement in numerous war crimes and atrocities has left an indelible mark in history. We will uncover the chilling history of this unit. The Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler, also known as the Leibstandarte, had its origins in the early days of the Nazi Party and played a significant role in the development of the SS. The unit's formation can be traced back to the early 1920s, when the Nazi Party was still in its infancy. Adolf Hitler, who had established the National Socialist German Workers' Party in 1920, realized the need for a personal bodyguard unit. Ernst Röhm formed a guard derived from the 19th Granatwerfer Company. This evolved eventually into the Sturmabteilung, or SA. In 1923, Adolf Hitler directed the creation of a more exclusive bodyguard unit dedicated solely to his protection, a unit distinct from the broader and less trustworthy SA. Initially, this bodyguard unit named Stabwache was an eight-man team led by Julius Schreck and Josef Berchtold. The Stabwache had unique badges and reintroduced the Totenkopf, or Death's Head, as its insignia, a symbol previously used by elite forces in World War I. By May 1923, the unit was renamed Stostrup Hitler, with its membership never exceeding 20 men. The Stostrup, alongside the SA and other Nazi paramilitary units, participated in the failed Beer Hall Putsch in Munich in November 1923. In its aftermath, Hitler was jailed, and all related groups, including the Stostrup, were disbanded. In 1925, Hitler again initiated the establishment of a bodyguard unit known as the Schutzkommando, which means Protection Command. The name was later changed to Sturmstaffel, or Assault Squadron, and then eventually to Schutzstaffel, commonly referred to as SS. By 1933, the SS had evolved from a modest bodyguard division to a large formation comprised of over 50,000 men. A decision was made to develop a new bodyguard unit called the Stabswache. The command of this unit was given to Seb Dietrich, who chose 117 men to form the SS Stabswache. Later in that year, two additional training units were established, the SS Zonderkommando Zossen and the SS Zonderkommando Jutteborg. These were the sole SS units to be given military training at the time. Later in the year, these two Zonderkommandos were merged to form the SS Zonderkommando Berlin under the leadership of Dietrich. These units were primarily entrusted with the responsibility of providing external security for Hitler in his residences, during public appearances, and performing guard duty at the Reich Chancellery. In November 1933, during the 10th anniversary of the Beer Hall Putsch, the Zonderkommando participated in a rally and memorial service to honor the Nazi Party members who had been killed during the failed coup. At this ceremony, the members of the Zonderkommando pledged their personal loyalty to Hitler. Following this, the unit was rechristened as Leibstandarte Adolf Hitler. The name Leibstandarte roughly translates to Bodyguard Regiment in English. In April 1934, the Leibstandarte underwent a significant change at the behest of Heinrich Himmler who was then at the helm of the SS. The unit was renamed to Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler, with Himmler strategically incorporating the SS initials into the name. This was a calculated move to underscore the autonomy of the unit, setting it apart from the SA and the army. The Leibstandarte was subsequently recognized as a National Socialist unit, which eventually evolved into an esteemed panzer division within the Waffen-SS. While Himmler was officially in charge, the day-to-day -day administration of the unit was handled by Josef Sepp Dietrich, who was considered the actual commander. Under the command of Josef Sepp Dietrich, the Leibstandarte quickly expanded in size and became a fully-fledged military unit. They were highly trained, well-equipped, and fiercely loyal to Hitler. This loyalty was demonstrated in 1938, when they played a crucial role in the Anschluss, the annexation of Austria into Nazi Germany. During the invasion of Poland in 1939, the Leibstandarte served as a motorized infantry unit and proved to be an effective fighting force. Their success in battle resulted in them being assigned to the Western Campaign, where they were involved in the invasion of France and the Low Countries. As the war progressed, the Leibstandarte was deployed on the Eastern Front, where they faced their toughest battles against Soviet forces. They played a significant role in the Siege of Leningrad and were heavily involved in the Battle of Kursk, one of the largest tank battles in history. 
Despite their military prowess, the Leibstandarte was also infamous for their involvement in multiple war crimes. During the fighting in the vicinity of Kharkov, a unit led by Joachim Piper acquired the moniker Blowtorch Battalion due to their involvement in the tragic events that unfolded in two Soviet villages. On February 12, 1943, troops from the Leibstandarte took control of these villages, where they encountered wounded SS officers left behind by retreating Soviet forces. In a brutal act of retaliation five days later, Leibstandarte troops mercilessly killed 872 men, women and children. Shockingly, around 240 of these innocent victims were burned alive inside the church of Yefremovka. Confirmation of the notorious reputation of the Blowtorch Battalion came in August 1944, when Sturmbannführer Jakob Hanreich, a high-ranking member of the unit, was captured and interrogated by the Allies south of Falaise, France. During the interrogation, Hanreich revealed that Piper displayed a particular eagerness to carry out orders to burn villages. One of the most notorious incidents was the massacre at Malmedy. In the winter of 1944, during the Battle of the Bulge, a tragedy unfolded in the small Belgian town of Malmedy. On December 17, an American combat unit, the 285th Field Artillery Observation Battalion, unexpectedly encountered a German tank brigade led by SS Obersturmbannführer Joachim Piper. The American soldiers, ill-prepared for a heavy tank assault, were quickly overpowered and forced to surrender. Piper's men, instead of taking their prisoners of war to a secure location, callously opened fire. The snow-covered ground of Malmedy turned a grim shade of crimson as 84 unarmed American officers were mercilessly gunned down in what would later be known as the Malmedy Massacre. The survivors, scattered and hiding, eventually made their way back to American lines, bringing with them the horrifying tale of brutality. The news of the massacre spurred American forces into a determined counteroffensive. Operation Spring Awakening, which took place from March 6 to 16, 1945, was the last substantial German offensive. Initiated in strict secrecy, the Germans targeted the area near Balaton in Hungary, which was situated on the Eastern Front. This region was significant as it held some of the few remaining oil reserves accessible to the Germans. Several German units, including the 6th SS Panzer Army, which were withdrawn from the Ardennes Offensive on the Western Front, were involved in this operation. Predictably, the operation did not yield the desired results, primarily due to its overly ambitious objectives, and it served as an illustration of Hitler's deteriorating military judgment as the war drew to a close. Following the unsuccessful operation, the 6th SS Panzer Army under Sepp Dietrich's command fell back to the vicinity of Vienna. There, the Germans hastily organized defensive measures in a desperate attempt to protect the city from the rapidly approaching Soviet forces, which precipitated the Vienna Offensive. The failure of Operation Spring Awakening is notorious primarily for the infamous Armband Order, also known as the Cuff Titles Order, which Hitler issued to Sepp Dietrich, the commander of the 6th SS Panzer Army. Hitler's order was a direct result of his belief that the troops did not fight as the situation demanded, and called for the removal of the Adolf Hitler Cuff Titles, which was seen as a sign of disgrace. Sepp Dietrich, however, was furious by Hitler's orders and told his officers that the armbands were to remain on, and the telegram should not be passed among the troops. This incident sparked a myth that a heap of medals was returned to Hitler in a chamber pot. Finally, the Leibstandarte after leaving Vienna was reported by the German Army High Command to have relocated to Zossen, near Berlin, and to Murwick, a part of Flensburg in northern Germany close to Denmark. There, they capitulated to the advancing British forces. The end of the war found a portion of the Leibstandarte engaged in the battle for Berlin. On the 23rd of April 1945, Hitler installed Brigadefuhrer Monke as the leader for the Zitadel sector, a line of defense encompassing the Reich Chancellery and the Führerbunker. The headquarters of Monke was situated in the bunkers beneath the Reich Chancellery, and he assembled Kampfgruppe Monke, composed of two under-resourced regiments totaling around 2,000 soldiers. The central part of this group consisted of the 800-strong Leibstandarte Guard Battalion, whose purpose was the protection of the Führer. Following Hitler's suicide, directives were issued for a breakout. Before this attempt, Monke informed all reachable commanders within the Zitadel sector about Hitler's demise and the escape plan. The breakout began on 1st of May at 2300 hours, led by Monke in the first of 10 small groups. While a few tiny groups succeeded in reaching the Americans on the west bank of the Elbe, the majority, including Monka's group, were unable to penetrate the Soviet lines. 
Many were taken into custody and some chose to commit suicide. On 2nd of May, Helmut Weidling, the commandant of the Berlin Defense Area, officially declared an end to hostilities. Following the capture of Vienna, the Leibstandarte was reduced to less than 1,600 men and 16 tanks. Following his surrender to American forces in May 1945, Sepp Dietrich found himself implicated in the execution of American prisoners at Malmody by SS personnel during the Ardennes Offensive. Consequently, he was handed a 25-year prison sentence in 1946, of which he only served 10 years. A decade later, in 1957, a German court found him culpable for his involvement in Hitler's 1934 purging of the SA, leading to an additional 20-month prison term. Well, that's it for today's video. We hope you like it. What do you think? Was this the most notorious German military unit? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more fascinating history content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.